All right, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mahra Suhail. I'm one of the first year admission counselors here at Elmhurst University Office of Admission. Um, I am so incredibly excited that you are all able to join this webinar with me tonight. Um, I know it's rather gloomy here, at least here in Chicago. There's lots of rain going on here. So um, hopefully everyone's staying inside warm and cozy um, and enjoying this webinar tonight. So Again, thank you to everyone who's uh, joining me tonight. Um, just to give you all reference, I will be doing these college transition webinar series twice a month um, for the next semester, right? So I have one, another one coming up this April, April 23rd. We'll be talking about next steps and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the webinar. Um, but May, June, July, we will be talking about other additional um, college trans transitional periods, moments and um, you know tips and tricks that I would love for all of our incoming students to be aware of. So you have a nice and smooth transition into Elmhurst University, right? Right. Um, so again, uh, I'm incredibly excited to dive in tonight. Um, tonight's webinar will be all about, as you guessed it, advising, right? So we're going to be talking about what exactly advising is, how you sign up for an advising appointment, and what you can expect, um, how to deal with advising throughout your four years here at Elmhurst University. So We'll dive a little bit more into um, the liberal arts journey here at Elmhurst, right? What does that integrated uh, curriculum look like? What sort of classes students are expected to take no matter what major they're pursuing? Um, and then of course, getting down into the nitty gritty um, and watching a one minute tutorial on exactly how to um, sign up for an advising appointment. And then lastly, at the end, we will go through any questions you have. Um, obviously there is a lovely chat box feature here at Zoom as many of you are familiar with. So feel free to enter any questions you have throughout the presentation as I go back through the slides. Um, and then at the very end, I will make sure to answer any questions you have. So again, please utilize that chat box. Uh, I am happy to answer any questions when we uh, go through those in the end. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. All right. So what is academic advising here at Elmhurst University? So I broke it down into these awesome, lovely boxes here um, that highlight primarily what you need to know. So as a student who's primarily in high school right now, you're finishing up your senior year, your mind has to slowly transition into what a college student mind needs to be, right? So your number one thing you need to worry about is exploring, right? This is the time for you to explore. Explore your interests, your values, your passions, your goals. Really think about what you want to do in a curriculum base, um, what you want to do career-wise potentially. And it's okay if there's only one career path you're um, specifically um, uh, passionate about, uh, but definitely keep an open mind. See what else you want to uh, really explore, what other interests um, spark your uh, noggin. Um, learn, right? Here at Elmhurst University, we want you to dive into uh, the plethora of majors we have here to offer. In fact, we have over 70 majors and 50 minors for students to choose from. So there's always something for um, an Elmhurst University student here. Um, and for any of my undecided folks here in the, uh, on the video call tonight, Rest assured, there's certainly a spot for you too. Uh, we have tons of students who come in Commerce University undecided. So if you're still um, not aware of what you want to do, that is absolutely okay. Um, that is, we will guide you to work closely with your academic advisor and taking a couple classes um, in uh, subjects that interest you and see what works better. Um, assess, right? Um, you want to make sure that you are on track to earn your degree here at Elmhurst University. So I'm going to quickly pause here and kind of define what an academic advisor is and what an admission counselor is. A lot of times people tend to confuse the two. Um, us admission counselors, we are here to counsel you throughout the admission process, right? Help you get into the university, help you with your financial aid packages, making sure that you have completed all the necessary steps you need to take in order to be a college student. 
And then an academic advisor is essentially somebody who is a professor here at Elmer's University who works closely with you for the next four years or however many, however many years you're going to be a student here at Elmer's University. So similar to who your guidance counselor is right now in high school, you meet with them on a semester basis or sometimes even more. Um, you talk to them about what classes work well for you, what you wanna sign up for. That's essentially who your academic advisor is. And they're specifically going to be a professor within your um, established major, okay? Um, and sure, uh, so again, we wanna make sure that we are meeting the requirements of the integrated curriculum, also known as gen eds, right? We, um, all liberal arts universities, including Elmhurst, has a set of gen eds that all students must complete, no matter what major you are pursuing. We just have a fancy way of saying in that, and that's integrated curriculum. And we will definitely dive into that a little bit more as to what those gen eds are in the next couple slides. Choose. You want to make sure that you are choosing the appropriate courses for registration. We don't want you to take a class that you're going to absolutely despise, right? Take courses that are obviously required, like we, are, like we chatted, um, but also take some courses that spark your interest, right? For me personally, when I was in college, I loved to draw. I loved to act. So what did I do? I took some theater classes. I took some drawing classes. And there were fun therapeutic courses that I took um, in addition to the heavy course loads where it required many more papers and um, uh, presentations and such. Um, and they were all electives, right? So they're still going to count towards your degree. So if you wanna take a voice lesson class, guess what? Guess what? That's gonna to count towards your bachelor's degree. So you're more than welcome to do so. Guide. Uh, make sure that you're using all the college's resources here on campus, right? We've got the Learning Center. Right? We've got the Tutoring Center. We've got the WCPE. This is a center for, um, for professional excellence. This allows our students to gain that professional experience uh, in order for you to be ready for the real world, right? Um, and then lastly, schedule. You want to learn all about the important advising information and timelines. This means pay attention to your emails, right? This is where you're going to get all the necessary and important information and deadlines as to um, when to sign up, when your specific advising appointment date is, and so forth. Moving right along. So um, like we talked about the integrated curriculum, all students need to complete this. As a first year student, um, we want to talk a little bit about the proficiencies and uh, first year seminar and all that good stuff, right? So when it comes to um, first year seminar, this is a phenomenal course that all freshmen are required to take. You have to take this class because it's essentially a fun college transition course. You will be um, taking this class along with, you guessed it, other freshmen. Um, and it's a very safe space that allows you to really shift your mindset and focus and really train your mind into and how to be a successful college student, right? Um, gaining all the tools and materials to be successful and get well adjusted. Full prof proficiencies are needed, um, such as math, English, and science, um, or I'm sorry, a foreign language. So when it comes to these proficiency and uh, placement tests, I will talk about that in, uh, in a little bit, but those are the main three that we are looking for when it comes to um, uh, Elmer's University, right? A lot of you who have applied, um, we, uh, we were really looking ho and hoping to receive um, on your transcript at least two years of foreign language of the same language. Um, if you have done so, you are good to go. If not, then we will need you to complete those at least one more year or those whole two years of some sort of foreign language, okay? An advisor is going to essentially be your guru. They're gonna guide you throughout the entire process. So through your academic advising meeting, everyone, please make sure um, to really ask all the questions about your major, or if you have any specific majors um, or a couple minors that you're interested in, bring that up to your advisor, right? They're here to help you, guide you towards um, whichever path is best suited for you, right? And rest assured, it's not until sophomore year, second semester, students declare their major. So first year, yes, you are starting off in a specific major, but it's not really set in stone or final until sophomore year, second semester. 
Um, and to give you, make you guys feel a little bit better, I changed my uh, major in college about three times. Um, so it's still very much doable, even if you are a little bit indecisive, but that's exactly what we're here for, right? Um, you're also going to be here to really receive that experiential learning experience. So what do we mean by that? internships, right, and study abroad. Um, when it comes to um, Elmhurst University, we are huge on when it comes to um, uh, sending our students off to internships. About 83% of our students um, in undergrad here at Elmhurst University receive some sort of internship experience or pre-professional um, component before they graduate from Elmhurst University. And it has helped them so much to build their resume, um, gain those professional experience, 93% of the students here at Elmhurst University within one year end up in grad school or get a full-time job across all majors, right? This just goes to show how much support that we, we have here on campus to really make sure that, yes, when you're done receiving your bachelor's degree, you can celebrate that, but we really want you to stand out as strong professionals in the real, wor in the real world um, and be stronger candidates amongst your peers. There are senior capstone ex uh, uh, experiences for specific majors. So uh, that's research project, right? Um, your students devote a lot of their semester time um, uh, focusing on a specific subject or matter um, in correlation to uh, their specific major or class. Um, again, building that professional experience. Um, and then of course, fulfilling your areas of knowledge as we call AOKs and skills and values tags, which I will go through in the next slide. All right, so here are our areas of knowledge. So AOKs, areas of knowledge are broad, interdisciplinary, developed um, around uh, specific um, objectives. So you essentially, as a student, are gonna take one class within each of these boxes. And sometimes if you have a specific major, you're already gonna knock out one of these boxes without having to take it. So like I said, we are a liberal arts university. So even if you're a nursing student in this webinar right now, or an education student or an art student, guess what? You're gonna to have to take a class in every single one of these boxes. So inquiry into ethics and justice. Some of the classes that house out of this is philosophy or ethics, courses like that. Religious studies and context. We have tons of religious classes here at Elmhurst where you can learn about Christianity, Judaism, Islam, or even more. We've got literature. We've got tons of literature courses here at Elmhurst. Fine arts. You can take a voice lessons class. You can take a theater class. You can take a drawing class. That's part of your AOK. History, historical analysis and taking any history course, social and political analysis, again, those sociology courses, cognitive and behavioral sci sciences, such as psychology, right, and physical science, um, such as physics, and life science, such as bio uh, biology and chemistry, right? So you only have to take one course within these boxes. Moving on to skills and values tags, right? So um, of course, aspects of courses, just like AOKs, you might get uh, these courses within your plan as well. So some may double, di double dip. So what we mean by that is, say for example, you're taking a, um, uh, a math class, one of your proficiencies, right? And it will also um, double dip into your quantitative reasoning tag. So if you take a class, chances are you're going to knock out a proficiency or an AOK and a skills and values tag. I know that sounds a little bit complicated, but rest assured, your academic advisor will be um, explaining to you all in plain detail what this exactly means, right? Um, so some of the soft skills that we really want our students to develop um, to be stronger candidates in the real world are taking classes within these skills and values tags. So oral communication, for example, learning how to public speak. I know a lot of folks get a little scared when they think about public speaking or giving speeches, but that is what real life is all about, right? You're going to have to work with um, clients or students or people in the real world, and you're going to learn how to effectively communicate. And so you have to complete this oral communication class um, because it will allow you to really uh, gain your confidence and your public speaking skills, communication skills, um, and learn how to, again, stand out amongst your peers. 
you want to make sure that students are writing at a 300 or 400 level, right? Um, we've got information literacy and our cultural global engagement, right? Such as those cultural diversity um, uh, courses that we offer here at Elmhurst and our cultural domestic engagement, you know, some of those political science courses, engaging social responsibility at a 300 or 400 level as well, right? So tons of these courses, everyone just like the AOK -OK, must complete every single one of these tags as well too. And like I said, your advisor is going to help you every step of the way to ensure that you complete every single one of these tags. All right, moving on. And again, guys, for those of you who came in a little bit late, um, feel free to enter any questions you have in the chat box. In the end, we'll go through any questions you have. Okay. All right. So um, the big question, how do you secure your advising appointment here at Elmhurst University? Um, so where can that be housed? In your Elmhurst Admitted Student Portal, right? So uh, many of uh, us admission counselors have probably bothered you via text, email, or in an appointment saying, hey, have you, um, Alexandria, did you sign into your Elmhurst Portal? Have you accessed your Elmhurst Portal? This is going to be your main hub, um, essentially, that's going to allow you to um, learn about what you're missing and where to find all of your materials, such as deposits and registering for your advising appointments and more, right? So let's um, you know, move forward a little bit. If you haven't already, everyone who's in this call, um, make sure you have already made your tuition deposit, but make sure you don't make your tuition deposit after you have met with your admission counselor about your cost payment breakdown, right? I want everyone to feel confident and fully secured about what they are going to potentially pay for um, in this upcoming school year. So um, if you haven't accessed your financial aid account, please do that tonight, right? Do it after this webinar, um, call or text one of us admission counselors. We'd be happy to set up a quick uh, 20 to 30 minute um, Zoom call where we can go through all of your lovely awards bit by bit and giving you unofficial cost payment breakdown, and then taking a look at what your estimated out-of-pocket cost is, right? We want you to feel financially comfortable of what you have to pay out of pocket before you fully commit. So this 100 tuition deposit that I'm alluding to is essentially you sealing the deal and um, reserving your spot here as an Elmhurst University student. Now, I did take a look at the list of the attendees. A lot of you have already made your tuition deposit. So congratulations, you're gonna be a Blue Jay, right? Um, you are fully committed and you are going to have such a great time this fall and we can't wait to have you on campus. So great job on being ahead of the game, I love it. Um, for, but for those of you who are still in the process, again, go to your portal, um, a little icon, which we did a quick little screenshot of, it's called TouchNet where it says deposits and payments, that is where you'll make your non-refundable $100 tuition deposit. Um, and for anyone who's going to live on campus, you will also need to make a $150 um, non-refundable um, housing deposit. So also keep that in mind. Now for advising, right? So when you're also in the portal, um, they're gonna click on the icon that says advising RSVP, right? Um, so from there, you're gonna go ahead and select up to three dates that work best for you. Um, and then you will receive an email and response from our advising office stating, um, you know, hello, Mateo, thank you for signing up for these um, appropriate dates. This is a date that ultimately we decided to schedule you for. So make sure that you show up at this date and at this time for your advising office, okay? Now, I know earlier this PowerPoint presentation, we talked about placement tests, right? So let's kind of go through what those are. When it comes to placement tests, you need to make sure you take those seven days prior to your um, advising date, okay? So I'll talk about that um, in the next slide, um, but those are really important. All of our students must complete those before your advising date. Um, and again, like we, like I said, watch out for that email in the next um, 20 or 24 to 48 hours um, on further instructions to um, establish your um, advising meeting. So placement uh, uh, tests, right? So we have three. 
We've got the writing, which is optional as listed. And then we have the math and foreign language. Okay, so these are the three placement e exams that all of our students must take as um, freshmen here at Elmer's University. And again, you wanna make sure you take those seven days before your appointment. The reason being is because we will make sure to um, put our students in the appropriate courses based upon your scores. So we did say writing is optional. Um, a lot of times students who are our stronger writers tend to still take this test. Why? Because there is a chance that you can test out of the first intermediate um, level course that we typically have a lot of our freshmen take. And if you have a high enough score, chances are you can move on to the very next class, right? You don't have to take um, and bother taking the very first English course. The math test is a requirement. The foreign language, again, circling back to those requirements, we are looking for students to have two years of the same language, a foreign language. Um, so you'll go ahead and just take the exam. Um, and I know a lot of students ask, well, Mahara, I don't want, I took two years of Spanish already in high school, and I'm not planning on taking any Spanish classes in Elmhurst, so I still need to take the test. You can just skip the um, survey parts or the test part, fill out the survey and, uh, and just go ahead and submit. But my biggest recommendation is still take the test. Just take the test because say for example, you pick up a major later down the road or a minor and that class requires you to have a placement exam of your um, foreign language, uh, right? Um, meaning there's a certain Spanish class that you'll have to take. We'll need to make sure um, that you're uh, based upon your placement exam, you have an appropriate score. We're not going to make you take a placement exam in the middle of college, right? So having that score done, ready to go in the beginning of college is always beneficial. So um, that's something to keep in mind. When it comes to placement tests, please be sure to really schedule those nicely within your schedule. It does take about an hour or maybe two hours per test. So make sure you're allocating an appropriate amount of time per test, okay? And again, they're located in your student portal. So um, it's gonna be in the Blackboard icon, okay? So when you're in your uh, Elmhurst portal, Blackboard icon is what you're going to click on. Once you're on that page on the left side, it's gonna say messages as one of the tabs. You'll click on that and then boom, you'll see all of your placement exams that you'll need to take, okay? Like I reiterated, make sure you take the test seven days before your advising appointment. Everyone, this is very important. You wanna make sure that we're making um, you know, your job easier and the advising um, um, advisor's uh, job a lot easier as well too, um, and making sure that your appointment runs as smoothly as possible, right? Uh, there are some virtual advising um, options that will be uh, available for students. So um, again, you can access that in your portal. Um, and what about parents, right? So our biggest advice is that these advising appointments are just for students. Parents are, you do not need to be part of this appointment, right? Um, this is part of the whole, all right, I need to let go, start learning how to let go of your hand and really let you do the whole college process by yourself. This is one of the first ones, right? Let your student, any parent who's on this call, please make sure you let your student do this advising appointment by themselves, right? Obviously have that conversation beforehand, um, but this is strictly for um, your students to do by themselves. Again, they're gonna have their academic advisor there. Your academic advisor is there to make sure you're graduating on time, fulfilling whatever major or minor you wanna pursue and making sure you're on track and fulfilling everything that you need, such as your um, skills and values tags and AOKs, right? Um, that's what they're there for. So um, rest assured, parents do not need to worry. All advising appointments always end up being very successful. And a lot of times there's peer advisors in those appointments as well too. Peer advisors are essentially upperclassmen um, who uh, help students sign up for courses as well too, right? So they will give their recommendations because they'll oftentimes be students within your students' major. So say, um, you know, Alexandra, you're gonna be uh, majoring in psychology. So one of your peer advisors will also be a fellow 
potential psychology student and say, hey, Alexandria, you know, this class was really fun. I took it my freshman year. I really suggest you take this. Um, the beautiful thing about college, everyone, is that you could build your schedule, right? You could say goodbye to taking eight classes a day. Mm -mm. You do not have to do that in college. Um, per semester, on average, students take about four to five classes. A full-time student means you're taking 12 semester hours, which is essentially three classes a semester. How cool is that, right? So there's some days where students will take an 8 a.m. class and a 12 p.m. class. So you only have two classes a day and so many hours and time in, um, between those classes and for the rest of your day, right? Um, so that's something also to keep in mind. You have a lot of access and privilege and control over how you want your schedule to look like. Be vocal and be honest and transparent with your advisor of how you want your schedule to look like. I know I'm sure plenty of you have jobs on camp or will have jobs on campus and have outside jobs, right? And you want to make sure you're balancing that on top of college. Let your advisor know, right? Say, hey, um, you know, uh, Mrs. DeLuca, I want to make sure that I'm still able to do my after school tutoring. So I want to make sure that all my classes are done in, um, in the morning, right? So they'll make sure that they can find classes that fit in with your schedule and that you need to fulfill, right? All right, moving along. If students ever need to reschedule, you're more than welcome to do so. So if you want to take a picture of this slide, you're, you're more than welcome to do so. So this email up here, new to EU at elmhurst.edu, is essentially where students need to go if they need to reschedule their advising date. Say, for example, an emergency came up or for you, um, you know, accidentally clicked on the wrong date. Um, no worries at all. We are happy to reschedule. Um, your advising appointments. Um, or if you have any questions um, regarding the advising office, you can easily email them at this email address. And they're very quick and helpful in answering any questions you have. Okay. And it is a first comes first serve basis. So remember, all of these set dates are available based upon the advisor's availability. So all of our advisors are, like I mentioned earlier, professors. So obviously, they're teaching courses. We have a lot going on on their schedule. So um, the sooner you can register yourself for an, an, an advising appointment, you all, the better, right? That's um, that's uh, going to be very helpful for you, very helpful for your advisor, and ensuring that you're going to have a nice, solid schedule ready to go for fall 2022. Okay. And again, if you have any questions at all, you know who to ask, right? So again, us admission counselors, we're here to help you make sure that you complete your placement test. Um, that you've got your deposits down, um, that you are a CP for an advising date. And again, please do not wait till the last minute. I do not want anyone to be stressed out. Um, to give you guys more context, um, we're going to have advising as early as May. Um, but then majority of the time, advising appointments happen all throughout summer. So all of June, July, and August. Yes, as late as August as well, too. Um, we offer advising appointments, but again, they do get booked up pretty soon, um, given the limitations of the advisor's availability. So again, uh, make sure you're scheduling at an appropriate time. Um, and if you're having a hard time getting access to that, you can ask us admission counselors. Um, and any specific advising related questions, please email new to EU, and hopefully they can help you in terms of rescheduling and stuff. All right, so I actually um, embedded a quick how-to tutorial on how, um, um, how to sign up for an advising date. So my lovely fellow colleague and admission counselors, George Martinez, um, did a little tutorial. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and play that for you all. Again, I know some of you have already done so, so you can just uh, sit back and until I move on to the next slide. But for those of you who haven't, please watch this video. And I did share my sound, so please let me know if you guys can or can't hear it. Hey there, future Blue Jays. This is George Martinez, an admissions counselor here at Elmhurst University. And today I'm gonna to show you all how to RSVP for advising and registration. So advising and registration is the day that you'll either come to campus or you'll be in a Zoom with your faculty advisor. And that is when you pick your classes for the first semester here. 
So the way to do that is on your My Elmhurst student portal, you're gonna see this advising RSVP button. Just click that and it'll bring you to another web page. This has some information just about our advising process. So some things to know is that the login is not gonna be your e number and your My Elmhurst student portal password. It's gonna be the stuff from when you apply to the university. So this will be your personal email address and the password you used when you applied to Elmhurst. If you need help getting back into this account, you can always forget your password link and we'll reactivate the password for you. Um, but what you'll do is you'll press this button here, RSVP for advising, and it'll bring you to a form. In this form, it'll ask you things such as your preferred days to come. Um, there will be a list of dates. So the earlier you do it, the more dates you'll have to choose from. Uh, until all the seats get filled for the day. So as days get filled, they will be taken off the availability sheet. So make sure that you RSVP sooner rather than later. And once you have this form in, that'll tell our faculty advisors that you are committed to Elmhurst and you're ready to come that day to pick your classes. So if you need to make sure that you take any of your placement tests, the writing, mathematics, or world language proficiencies, make sure that you take these tests at least seven days before your advising date. But this is everything that we have for getting ready to RSVP for advising and registration. If you have any questions, please reach out to your admissions counselor. Awesome, awesome. All righty, moving right along um, to our next, I believe that should be it. Um, I'm ready to go through any of the questions you guys have. So again, um, you know, thank you so much for sitting through this all, a webinar that talked all about advising. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat box and see any specific questions you guys had. So um, please enter any questions you have right now um, about today's presentation or about advising. Um, I'm happy to go through those with you all. Okay, so I have it up right now. If we took two years in high school for in terms of foreign language and college, do we need to? So again, just reiterating, if you've already taken two years of foreign language um, throughout high school, you are all set, right? You do not need to take any more foreign language in college. Um, that's primarily what we look for. But say, for example, you only took one year of Spanish in high school only, we're gonna need you to complete one more year of Spanish in Elmhurst to knock those two years out, okay? All right, next question on the topic of classes and such. If we did dual credit in high school, how do we check if our credits transfer to Elmhurst, especially if you're an out-of-state student? Thank you, Brianna, for that question. That is a wonderful question. Um, all you need to do is essentially um, send us your transcript and we can fill out an unofficial transfer credit evaluation. So that's essentially where we take a look at all of your dual credits that you've taken at your local community college or a nearby um, for your university. And we will let you know which of those courses will transfer through and fulfill in as your elective or your AOKs or skills and tags um, or any of that such, right? And then we can also let you know which of those courses didn't come through. Um, so if that's the case, let me go ahead and give you the email address where you can send us your transcript. So it's just transcripts for eu at elmhurst.edu. Please go ahead and email that, um, your transcript to us and say, hello, here is my transcript for my dual credits that I've taken. Um, if someone can, um, you know, I would like to know which of these classes will transfer through an admission council or work on that for you and make sure all of your, um, uh, uh, let you know which of those classes will transfer through or not. Thank you for your question. Um, can you take your uh, placement tests earlier? Um, so by earlier, do you mean before you're advising a date? Because that is highly encouraged, right? Um, so obviously there's a chronological order as to how you wanna complete these transitional periods and moments in your time um, into before coming into Elmhurst. Um, so again, after you have made your deposit, so you've secured your spot here at Elmhurst University, then you want to go ahead and, you know, RSVP for advising. And once you have that day all settled and ready to go, and you have that date scheduled into your calendar, make sure, you know, before that, um, say that day scheduled your advising, the very same day you can take your placement exam, right? So you're really welcome to do so then. 
Moving on to the next question. As a nursing student, I will be starting nursing school fall 2022. Do I still need to take placement tests um, as a transfer student? Good question, Amreen. So there are placement tests for transfer students as well. Um, you will just have to work closely with your transfer admission counselor um, to see which of those placement tests are required out of you. Okay. And again, they can be found in your Elmhurst portal and the Blackboard um, icon. Um, and then on the left side, when you click on that, it'll say messages. And then the message will appear if there's a certain place test that is waiting for you to take. Okay. I did Spanish and freshman through junior. Um, do I still need to take my foreign language test? Um, great question. So I would, like I said, I recommend all of our students who've already fulfilled two years of foreign language to still take it. Um, just so we have your score on file in case you do end up picking up another foreign language class throughout um, Elmhurst. Um, but if not, you can just skip the test and just take the survey and you should be good to go. Okay. Another question. Um, let's say I took two years of French, but I'm more comfortable in Spanish. Would I need to take two classes? Um, what if I have a seal of uh, biliteracy? Does that mean anything? Uh, good question. So if you've taken two years of French, um, you know, and you wish to take classes in Spanish, you definitely have that option to do so, right? We have students who major in um, multi-language um, and have multiple languages under their belts. Um, but again, it's not required, Jasmine, so that's just an option for you. Okay, so again, it's not required. You don't have to take two more classes of Spanish at all. Um, it's just gonna be completely optional for you to take a foreign language class. It's only mandatory if you don't complete more than um, uh, uh, one year. Okay. Next question. When are my high school transcripts due? Good question, Mike. So um, when you, um, hopefully you've already applied to Elmhurst University because in that process, we are, we do require all of our students to submit their, um, their uh, official transcripts to us. So your most updated transcripts. Now say, for example, Mike, you have already committed to the university um, and you're, you're going to come to Elmhurst, right? When you graduate that summer, we will need to request your final transcript, okay? So all of our students on this call right now, uh, make sure you have that conversation with your guidance counselor and making sure that when you are done graduating from your high school, make sure that they send your final transcript over to Elmhurst University because that is mandatory. We do need your final transcript um, as proof of that you graduated and making sure that you've completed all of your courses for last senior year of the semester. Good question. All right, Andy, lots of questions, I love it. Um, my question is how do I get my visa activated before the day of um, resuming, you're an international student. I love it. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have an answer to this question given I'm not an international admission counselor, but let me go ahead and give you information um, uh, about um, uh, information from our international admission counselor, um, Tony Murata. He's phenomenal. He would be happy to help you um, um, in terms of how to uh, retrieve all of that information in regards to visa status um, and anything international student related. So let me go ahead and pull his information up now. Um, hopefully you're already in contact with him because he works with all of our international students. So um, Andrew, why don't I go ahead and add his contact information in the chat box for you. Okay, I just direct message it to you. Okay. Um, Moving forward, Lydia, um, you asked, do our high school counselors send our transcripts or do we have to do that? Good question. So in order for us to receive it as an official transcript, your high school counselor must send that to us. If you send it to us, um, an unofficial, then we will only receive that as an unofficial transcript. Um, however, if you send it to us through parchment, right, um, an official copy, um, and it's or it's sealed, if you're going to send it in an, a physical copy, then we can receive that as official. But um, nowadays, the most popular route is just um, letting your high school counselor know or ordering it through parchment and sending it directly to Elmhurst University. 
Okay, so a lot of times around this time, high school counselors are aware, um, um, or, you know, which high school or which university you're ultimately going to commit to. Um, so they will make sure to hopefully send your official and final transcript um, from your high school and send it our way so we have access to that. Okay, good question, good question. Any other questions about today's webinar about advising? How are we all feeling so far? I see a thumbs up from Alexandria. Awesome, I love it. Thank you, thank you. That's great. And from Eric, beautiful. And from Zell, I love it. I'm loving these thumbs ups. <laughs> um, how? Do, oh, sorry, Andy, I forgot yours. Um, how do you get to know the course to be offered? Great question. And your academic advising appointment, right? Um, your advisor is actually going to sit down with you, Andy, and make sure, okay, um, Andy, for example, you're going to major in psychology. Sweet deal. Let's take a look at all the psychology courses you will be taking. And just to give you guys reassurance, your very first semester, heck, every semester here at Elmhurst University will not consist of you just taking every class pertaining to your major. Absolutely not, right? Your academic advisor is going to do a phenomenal job of making sure that you're going to have a good balance of every course. So you'll take a gen ed course, right, in areas of knowledge, such as a history class. And then you'll take a skills and values tag class, right? Maybe a communication class. Then say you are a, um, you know, a nursing major, you'll take one nursing class. And then say you want to take an elective, you'll take a voice lessons class. Boom, you got yourself one semester, right? But you'll have a sprinkle of everything completed every single semester. So work closely with your academic advisor and they'll be happy to, um, you know, make sure you're all set to go, okay? Awesome, awesome folks. Well, don't leave just yet. I went ahead and pasted this really important link. Um, this is essentially all the different webinars that we have coming up for you this spring, okay? So myself and the rest of my lovely colleagues and admission counselors are hosting so many webinars, one specifically for students and for any parents for logging in right now, we have the new to the e, um, new to the blue um, session where um, two of our amazing directors um, uh, host that webinar series. So uh, please tune into these webinar series because obviously we give you a lot of exclusive access and behind the scenes as to what you need to know as a um, incoming student here at Elmer University. So please check that page out. Um, if you have any questions, again, you have my contact information. So feel free to contact me. Um, my next webinar is going to be on um, Wednesday, April 23rd. Uh, uh, so in a couple weeks, and we'll be talking about next right? So um, as admitted students, what your next steps are going to look like in order to join the Blue Jay Nest. Um, and I cannot wait to see you all hopefully soon that next Wednesday, okay? Have a great night. Um, stay inside. I know it's getting crazy outside with the weather, but enjoy the rest of your day. Um, take care and hopefully I'll see you all next week. Bye everyone.